Well, good morning, Journey. So good to be with you, Pastor Brian here, hanging out with friend Patrick. Patrick, how are you doing this morning? I'm great, Brian. Awesome. How are you doing? Awesome. Thanks for being here with yeah. me this morning. Uh, maybe you've seen Patrick. He, he's going to be shredding on the guitar this morning. Uh, but there's something else I want you to know about Patrick. Patrick is a vet. Thank you for your service. Uh, it's Memorial Day weekend. And so uh, we just want to say, say thank you to you and to all of those who have given of themselves, and, and especially those who are f friends and family who have given the ultimate sacrifice. Patrick, um, what is, since you've served, what does Memorial Day mean to those who have served? I, I gotta imagine it means a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I can speak for, for pretty much every veteran to say that when you, when you enlist or however you go into the military, there's an inherent risk that you'll get, you pay the ultimate sacrifice mm. and give your life. So it's, it's really a sacred thing. Mm. Um, yeah. yeah, it's, it, it's hard to say that without your voice even trembling to just yeah. think of what people have given to give us the freedoms, Our, that, we uh, have. freedoms that we enjoy Absolutely. here in this country. Yeah. yeah, yeah. well, once again, thank you so much for that. We know that this is a meaningful uh, weekend for everyone. So uh, we hope you have a safe and wonderful Memorial Day weekend. It's also, Patrick, uh, kind of the kickoff of summer. Uh, you got any cool summer plans that you're looking forward to? So, I mean, I mean, last weekend we were out doing a little floating and you taught me how to fly fish. We were fly so fishing, I should, right? I should probably run with that, You right? caught fish! <laughs> You caught we, fish, we caught man. How, how big? How big was the fish? I mean, uh, you're in church. You're in church. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Well, at least he learned that much about fishing. So it's an important part, yeah, right? It is an important part. <laughs> so we'll have to get out, maybe do that, do a little bit of hiking. I heard you want yeah. to do a little bit of hiking this summer and check out some new things, maybe. Yeah, I grew up here, but obviously left for the army. So there's a lot of outdoors. Yeah. That I'd still like to experience Absolutely. after moving back here. So good, yeah. good. We're all looking forward to spending lots of time outdoors this summer. We're also kicking a new series today called It's Complicated, and it's all about relationships. So I'm wondering if you got some really good relationship uh, advice for us this morning, Patrick. Yeah, I'm gonna, uh, I'm all ears. <laughs> <laughs> I'll defer to you on that one. I think, we all, I think we all have a lot to learn. Yeah. We're really excited about this new series. It's complicated on relationships for the next uh, five weeks. Can't wait to share that with you. Hey, thanks for being with me this morning, Patrick. We're going to uh, kick it over to you and to the team. You guys are going to keep us in the mood, right? That's You've right. got Top Gun, Danger Zone. I'm telling you, it's, it's one of the most iconic songs. I know. I love it. I love it. So if you know it, sing along. Uh, we've got Danger Zone for you this morning and Top Gun releases this week. That's what I heard. Yeah, that's a good the plug, new, right? The new one. Yeah. yeah, that's really good. I didn't even get paid for that. Yeah. Good, good to be with you, Journey. Good to be with you, Patrick. Yeah, you too, Brian.
Good morning, Journey. Great to be with you. Happy Memorial Day weekend. I want to introduce you to some new family, a new family member here at Journey. Uh, this is Rich and Desiree, and this is their little miracle. Desiree was just mentioning to me. Uh, she didn't know she'd be able to have a kiddo, and here he is. This, this everybody, is Jackson Allen James Camp. Come on now. Jackson Allen James Camp. You, you got a lot to live up to, man. That's a big name, my man. That's a big name. Hey, around here at Journey, we dedicate our children to the Lord. We commit ourselves uh, to raising them to know Jesus, and then we help them become all-in followers of him. And so that's what we're doing this morning. And someday we're going to celebrate with Jackson as we uh, baptize him maybe in the river or in one of these big tanks on a baptism Sunday as we get to see the fruition of all of that work and commitment. So I have a couple questions for you guys. And uh, if that rings true in your hearts, just say we do. And then I've got a couple questions for the rest of the family this morning. So Rich and Desiree, uh, do you commit to dedicating your son to Jesus? Yes, we do. All right. Do you, do you want to help him become an all-in follower of him? Yes, we do. Yes. Do you want to pray with him, teach him the Bible, help him in these moments when he's got big questions about God? Do you want to help him grow in that area? Yes, we do. Absolutely. Awesome. And church family, I want you to stand up because I got a question for you as well. At the end of it, if you could please respond, we do God helping us. So church family, do you commit to loving and caring for Jackson, to helping him become an all-in follower of Jesus, to maybe holding him in base camp, to maybe helping them when they need a little bit of help, bringing them a meal or something, coming around them in their lives uh, do you commit to being a great family member and to loving Jackson and helping Rich and Desiree raise him toward Jesus? How do you answer? We do, God helping us. You said you'd pray, so let's pray for this family. Jesus, thank you so much. Thank you for Jackson. Thank you that he is yours. And God, that you saw him long before Desiree and Rich did, long before their plans were that. Uh, you knew about him, and you brought him to them just at the right time. So God, we dedicate him to you. We pray that you would continue to run after him his entire life, and God, we pray that he would respond to you, that he would love you, that you, he would someday call you his Lord and Savior. I pray that you would be with Rich and Desiree, give them strength and courage, give them everything they stand in need of as parents. And Jesus, as a church family, uh, we pray that we would surround them with your love as well. We pray this all in your name. Amen. Hey, can we welcome our new family members to the family? All right. Journey, stay standing while we worship our Lord. So hard to see it Took me so long to believe it You choose someone like me To carry your victory Perfection could never earn it You give what we don't deserve it the broken things raise them to glory you are my champion giants fall when you stand undefeated every battle you won I am who you say I am you crown Conquered it all 
shout Every wall comes crashing down I have the authority Jesus has given me When I open up my mouth Miracles start breaking out I have the authority Jesus has given me I could 
never out to be somebody you still want, but somehow you love me as you find.
quiet the chaos, destroy the lies, break every idol, tear down the walls, quiet the chaos, destroy the lies. job band thanks for being here well good morning church hey, I just want to tell you uh, I just got to tell you that, that we dedicated a baby at the nine o'clock and the kid's name was Rowdy Roy yeah. right I said okay parents you asked you asked for it right Rowdy Roy <laughs> cool cool little kid anyway uh, my name's John and I just want to uh, welcome you today thanks for being here also welcome everybody that's watching on a live stream from really all over the world. So we're just glad that you've joined us and are part of, a, part of this church. So if you're in this room, uh, this would be a great time for you to take a seat, please. <clears throat> awesome. Thanks for doing that. Uh, let me start with this. I hope that all of you are having a Wonderful Memorial Day weekend, and I've been thinking about that, and I just need to tell you that I take this weekend for granted a lot, and, uh, but, but here's, here's what I want, want you to know. Uh, I am thankful and very, very grateful for uh, the sacrificed uh, lives um, throughout time that allows me and you to sit in this room, right, and we get to worship our one and only God in total freedom. So, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Try to give that some thought over the next couple days with me. All right, I want to talk to you uh, about uh, leadership or being a leader. When I read through the Bible, and I think when you read through the Bible, the scriptures ask us to be great leaders. Why is that? Well, I think it's because our creator knew that we would be the primary vessels, the primary way that his kingdom would be expanded. And so your church takes that seriously. We know that's important. And because of that, we host every year a thing called the Global Leadership Summit. What's the Global Leadership Summit? It's a two-day gathering of high-end, and I mean really top-notch speakers sharing their wisdom on leadership development. And so here's my ask, church. I'd love for you to join your journey staff at this event. It takes place on, 
August 4th and 5th. That's a Thursday and a Friday in August. And consider that an investment in your leadership, but also a cons- uh, consider it a, an investment in your church because we really need more and more leaders around our church body. Here's some of the details. If you register, if you can re- register before Tuesday at midnight, that price, uh, the best price we can get right now is $139. And when you register, we need to use that code up there, that, uh, that leadership code. Uh, so take a picture of that or memorize it uh, or write it down and use that when you register. You can register through that QR code or you can jump on our website. I think it's journeyweb.net slash summit, okay? There's one other group of people, actually three groups of people that um, get even a special lower pricing. Uh, That is active military and reserve. Students and faculty, if you are in that education world, you'll get a special price. And also all first responders. And those prices can be found as as well on that QR code, okay? I'm gonna be in the lobby afterwards uh, at a place called the Generosity Rockstar table. And so I'd be able to answer any leadership Uh, global leadership questions you have. I'll also be able to answer questions about being a generosity rock star around Journey Church. Both of those are uh, cool leadership opportunities for you. Okay, finally, uh, Brian, uh, Pastor Brian's gonna come out here in just a little bit. He's gonna deliver a sermon. I've already heard it. It's awesome. Uh, But what's cool about it, in the middle of his sermon, he's got this uh, video piece from uh, a lady who was a, uh, Brene Brown is her name, and she was a previous uh, speaker at the Global Leadership Summit. So you'll get a chance to kind of see the level of talent at this summit. And so I just kind of wanted to give you that heads up and pay attention to that. Lastly, uh, we have lots of other things that are going on around this church. And so why don't you watch this with me and find out about that? It's summer in Montana, and we have two months to get all of our favorite activities in. Let's go. Think this is going to make marks around my eyes? Ah, oh, Cardinal Champion! Yes, yes. Woo. Here, butterfly. Here, butterfly. Which one? No, the whole thing. I'm doing the whole thing. We love summer and base camp, and our volunteers do too. During the summer, at any given time, we may have 50% of our volunteers on family vacations, home, visiting relatives from college, you name it. So this is your opportunity. We would love for you to consider checking out serving in base camp one or two Sundays this summer. So come as you are, grab a friend, or better yet, take over a Sunday in base camp this summer with your community group. Choose to make a difference in the life of a child. Details are on your screen. All right, Logan, go long, go long. No, no, keep going. No, I can do it. Keep going. No, just a little more. All right, here we go. How many of you are ready to grow in your leadership? Most of the times, the growth option is the scariest one. Imagine the legacy you would want and then work backwards. A rebel leader looks at every situation with curiosity. Don't become such an expert that you can't see things anymore. The question I'm asking is, will you lead when you are invited to? You might not be exactly where you want to be in life. But we need to look our fear straight in the eye. And find your groove. Our legacy is defined by how we treat others. 
The ability to take social risks is as important as a breakthrough idea. Only you can choose how you want to impact your society. What's the best that can happen? The very reason you are where you are is because you're the right person for this moment. It's complicated. This weekend kicks off summer for all of us, but uh, for those of us who are pastors, it also kicks off something we like to call wedding season. Uh, I got to do a wedding just yesterday, had a wonderful time with that wedding out at the Heart Ranch, which uh, we just had a great time. This isn't a plug for them, but like, if there was one place I've always thought about wedding crashing, the Heart Ranch. I've actually tried to talk my wife into it a few times. But like, their names are on the sign, honey. We just walk in like we know them. Anyway, she's never partaken with me on that. We love weddings. We love being around the dynamics of weddings. Can I ask you a question? You ever been to a weird wedding? Just, just be honest. Have you ever been like one of those uncomfortable, uncomfortable weddings? You're like, that was slightly uncomfortable. Maybe, maybe it was your wedding, and you don't even know that it was uncomfortable. <laughs> But everybody else knew it was uncomfortable. <laughs> like, weddings are really interesting, you guys. Uh, pastors get a front row seat uh, to the lives and relationships of people bringing uh, two families together. So, so you've got these crazy interpersonal uh, relationship uh, paradigms happening right in front of you. You've got situations with parents and kids, right? You, you, you've got dynamics between uh, the the spouse, the, the groom's side, and uh, the bride's side, right? You've got interpersonal dynamics around marriages. So when we're talking about the wedding itself, you've, you've got like some divorces, and you've got some happily married for 40 years, and you've got all kinds of different dynamics. You've got people at the wedding um, that, that they're like, I probably should have married her, but I missed my chance, like those kind of things, right? Weird dynamics at a wedding. And I just want to ask this question as we start this morning. We do relationships so much, but why are relationships complicated? Why are they so complicated? Right? You would think we would be a little better at relationships, wouldn't you? But for some reason, relationships are really, really complicated. I mean, think about this. It should be easier for us. It should be easier for us to figure out relationships. Relationships are so central to who we are. Think about your own story. You're born and you have parents. You have a relationship with your parents. Your parents have a relationship with you. Then you get into school and you, you learn how to have friends and you've got relationships with them. And then you, you get into high school and, and you're like, oh, I'm, maybe I'm going to ask that girl out or, 
or maybe he's going to ask me out. And so you got this, these dynamics of like, oh, who's going to, how are we going to develop a relationship, a romantic relationship? Turns into a wedding day possibly at some point, and, and you're going to gather your lives together and, and, and walk this road united as one. And then, and then you have kids, and the, the cycle starts all over. Our lives are filled with relationships. You would think we would be better at them, wouldn't you? But the reality is, Our relationships are complicated, very, very complicated. And so this is what we want to do with our time together for the next five weeks as we enter into the summer. We want to take some time to talk about the complexities of our relationships. We're going to be talking about dating. We're going to be talking about friendship. We're going to be talking about parenting. And we're going to be talking about marriage. All of these dynamics within these relationships and what makes them complicated. So I want to start out with a baseline. I want to introduce all of those conversations to you by first making an honest confession. Okay? Here's my honest confession. I'm so complicated. That's my confession. And here's what I want you to say. I want you to say it too. Okay? So I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, I'm so complicated. I'm serious. Go do, do this. I'm so compl- if you're online, type it into the chat. I'm so complicated with an emoji to explain how complicated you actually might be. So, somebody just said, I'm complicated to somebody else, and the person was thinking, you're more complicated than I am. That is correct. That is, that is accurate. <laughs> okay. I, I don't want you to focus on them right now. I want you to focus on you right now. I want you to be honest about this. You're so complicated. You are so complicated. I am so complicated. See, we all have an origin story, right? Origin stories aren't just for X-Men. They're not just for Marvel characters. They're for us too. We have an origin story, right? Like if we sat down and had coffee, this is one of my favorite things to do. In fact, in my new endeavor that I'm working on right now is I'm actually engaging in people's stories, And people's stories reveal so much about them. And so if we sat for coffee and I said, hey, tell me a little bit about your story, you would tell me your origin story. You'd tell me uh, about the family that you were born into. And that family has complications. It makes things complicated. You might have interpersonal relationship issues with your parents. Maybe it was good. Maybe it was hard. Uh, You've got some genetics going on there, right? So you're like, I hear my mother coming out of my mouth. That's because you're half of her. Like, that's, like you're genetically connected to her. You've got these important moments and these important stories, these important people in your life, relationships that have been pivotal in your story. Like if we sat and we had a conversation, I said, tell me your story. Tell me some of the most pivotal people, the most important, influential people. You would have names for me, wouldn't you? You would have moments for me. Moments when people spoke truth into your life and moments when people spoke lies into your life. Moments when people, they gave you their best and moments when people gave you their absolute worst. See, we're complicated. I'm complicated, and you're complicated. And that's why relationships are so complicated. One of the tools that I love to use is called the Enneagram. I don't know if you're familiar with this at all, but it's kind of a fun little personality test, and it it helps you kind of understand a little bit more about your story. And and there's... um, Ian Morgan Cron, who is an author and just an expert in this field and wrote a book called The Road Back to You. He also wrote a new book just out uh, called The Story of You. But he he talks about these nine different personality types and, and how that engages with the complexities of our story. And he says this, human beings are wired for survival. It's an interesting way to start. As little kids, we instinctually place a mask called personality over the parts of our authentic self to protect us from the harm and make our way in the world. Made up of innate qualities, coping strategies, conditioned reflexes, and defense mechanisms, among lots of other things, our personality helps us know and do what we sense is required to please our parents, 
to fit in and relate well with our friends, to satisfy the expectations of our culture, and to get our basic needs met. Ian Morgan Cron would say, you are complicated. I am complicated. And James, the brother of Jesus, would say, it's even more complicated than that. So James says this in James chapter four, one through three. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Spoiler alert, we're gonna talk about marriage, so we're gonna talk about fighting. Okay, all right, just putting it out there. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? The problem is within you. You desire, but you do not have, so you kill. You covet because you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask God, you do not receive because you ask with the wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. James, the brother of Jesus, would say, the problem, it starts inside of us. Our our complications have to do with our desires, our wants. Even our motives are suspect. And so it creates complications in our relationships. And, and so we've got we've to ask the question, if, if I'm complicated and you're complicated, what, that, then, then how do we work this through? Because it gets, like, I feel like we're just getting worse and worse and worse. It's okay, it'll get better at some point, I promise, okay? Because listen, when I'm so complicated meets I'm so complicated. So think you have a sticker on your chest, right? It says, I'm so complicated. And then you meet somebody else, like it's your kid or it's your spouse or it's your coworker or your friend. You've got a little name tag. It says, when I'm so complicated meets I'm so complicated. Guess what? Things get more complicated. That's how it works, right? You go, she completes me. No, she makes your life more complicated, okay? No, and that's not a dig. Because you know what, guys? You're, je- you're worse, just, let's just be honest, right? Right, all the women say amen. Because I mean, like, he's really complicated. He actually thinks he's simple, he's not that simple. He's pretty complicated, right? Our kiddo, our kiddo's complicated. Like, we can- you're like, I cannot figure out my nine-year-old. I can't do it. Like, one day he's this way, one day he's another way. I cannot figure him out, he's complicated. And meanwhile, your nine-year-old is like, my mom and dad are complicated. Like, I, I don't know what makes them happy or sad, or sometimes they're frustrated about certain things, sometimes they're not. They seem complicated. When I'm so complicated meets I'm so complicated, things get more complicated. I, I want to give you a, a really great example of what that actually looks like. And the way I want to do that is I want to share this clip um, from Brene Brown. She's one of the speakers at Global Leadership Summit a couple of years ago. Once again, just want to reiterate what John said. I think this is super important for you guys to be at. I, I can't even remember how many years, honestly, that I've been at the Global Leadership Summit. Every year, it is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, Brene Brown, Dr. Brene Brown is uh, the writer of Daring Greatly, Braving the Wilderness, and Dare to Lead. Um, you'll hear more about this, but she's a shame researcher, which is really, really interesting. And she has this story, uh, it's about a little over 10 minute clip, so, so stay with it. I, I think you'll stay really engaged. Um, and, and as you listen to it, here's what I want you to think about. I want you to think about the story that you tell yourself, whether that's a complicated story or not. And the story that you're telling yourself about others and whether that story is complicated or not and whether or not we need a new story. Watch this. I am going to tell you a story that I think moves me through all of my work over the last 15 years. It's a story about vulnerability, it's a story about shame, it's a story about rising strong, it's a story about love, relationships, and it's a story that holds inside of it for me everything that's sacred also about being a leader. So this story happened a couple of summers ago when my husband Steve and I decided that we were going to pool all of our vacation days and take a big Mongo vacation over the summer and rent a lake house at Lake Travis in Austin, Texas. 
hook them horns to the one person who said that. <laughs> um, I'm right there with you. So we were really excited about this vacation. I'm particularly excited because Lake Travis, I spent every summer of my life on this lake. It's where I learned to run a trot line, catch perch, shoot a BB gun, uh, set a table, uh, make, you know, it's where I learned how to do everything. And so I couldn't wait to share this magic with Steve and my kids. So Steve and I had this very serious parenting meeting before we leave where we're like, look, this is a two week vacation. There's gotta be some rules around this. Like we can't just go on vacation like we sometimes do for a long weekend and let the kids run wild around technology and bedtimes, they'll be feral by the time we get home. And so we have this big plan that we're gonna have bedtimes, limited screen time, we're going to cook every night and we're going to have a healthy vacation. Um, the goal was to come back in better shape than when we left. Y'all are supposed to say, of course. Um, so this house that we rented was on a, is on a deep water cove in Lake Travis. And to, to get across the cove is about 500 yards. So Steve and I, in our planning, decide that we are going to swim this cove every day of our vacation, 1,000 yards, 500 there, 500 back. Well, Steve and I met coaching swimming. We're both ex-competitive swimmers. Steve still swims. I am a shame researcher. <laughs> but that's okay, because I got, you know, I, I felt some courage. Um, so I went and bought a Speedo. <laughs> a little sticker shock, um, because it was the first time, you know, this time, this, this time in Lake Travis was going to be the first time we'd been in the water together for 25 years. We've been together a very long time. So one morning, and we invited my whole family. So my parents are married and divorced, re, you know, divorced and remarried. Steve's parents are divorced and remarried. There's eight grandparents, four sets. Um, I'm the oldest of four. We invite, Steve's got a brother. We invite everyone and we say, look, you can come anytime. Here are the two weeks we're gonna be there. It's going to be a healthy vacation. Call ahead, we'll tell you what to bring for groceries. They're like, Sounds fun, can't wait. Um, <laughs> so one morning, everyone's asleep. My sisters are visiting. Um, we leave the kids at the up at the house. We walk down this long stairway to the dock, and we dive in. And we start swimming across. And we get about halfway across. And we stop to look for boats and look around. And he's about, I don't know, 15 feet, like us, right here. We're about this far apart from each other. I am overwhelmed by the sheer majesty of this moment, of this place that has been so important to me. So I look at Steve and I say, I feel so connected to you. I'm so glad we're doing this. And he looks back at me and he says, yeah, water's good. And he keeps going. <laughs> the sound of men laughing. Um, <laughs> so my first thought, and I know you're going to think this is arrogant, but my first thought is he is so overwhelmed with emotion <laughs> that he can't, he doesn't know what to say back to me. <laughs> like, that poor guy. Um, because in our marriage, it'd be much more likely that Steve would say that to me than I would say that to Steve, because he's a braver person than I am. Um, and so I was like, wow, I don't know what's happening. So we keep swimming, and we get to the other side, and he's kind of taking off, and I get in, and this time, we're two feet, you know, we're this, we're this far from each other. And so my theory about water in the ear, emotional overwhelm, that's all cleared up, because we're really close now. So I look back at him, and I say, hey, I just want to tell you, it's so beautiful here, and I'm so grateful that we decided to spend this time together and do this. I feel really close to you. And he looked back at me and he said, yeah, water's good. And he keeps swimming. <laughs> Let me ask you this. How many men in here know how this story ends? <laughs> This is not a rhetorical question. Raise your hand if you're a guy in here and you know how this story ends. <laughs> right. 
So I am now fueled through the water by simply rage. Um, <laughs> and I'm swimming. And I know exactly how the story ends. This is the gift of midlife. The gift of midlife is that you can play the tape to the end. <laughs> we'll get back to the house. We'll dry off on the dock. We'll walk up the long stairs. We'll get into the kitchen. He'll look at me and he'll say, hey, babe, what's for breakfast? <laughs> and I'll say, I don't know, babe. Let me ask the breakfast fairy. Oh, breakfast fairy. <laughs> breakfast fairy. What's for breakfast this morning, breakfast fairy? <laughs> and then I'll look at Steve and I'll say, oh, I'm sorry, Steve, I forgot how vacation works. I forgot that I'm in charge of breakfast and lunch and dinner and groceries and goggles and bug spray and towels and packing and unpacking and laundry. I forgot how our vacation works. <laughs> this is uncomfortable laughter. Okay, let me just, I'm being vulnerable and honest, right? Let me just see a show of hands of how many of you relate to this story or if this has ever happened in your life. <laughs> right. The worst thing about my tirade with the breakfast fairy is that somewhere halfway through it, Steve will go like this. <laughs> did, did something happen? And then the 24 to 48 hour Cold War begins. <laughs> and I will win because I'm meaner. Um, but it's not great for me, it's not great for my kids, it's not great for the people around us. It's uncomfortable, it's awkward, and it's egg shelly. And I don't know about you, but I grew up around a lot of egg shelly. I don't like egg shelly. Um, so I'm like, this is not going to happen. So I get back to the dock five strokes ahead of him, but not that I was counting. Um, and he gets back, and he's pulling himself out of this little rickety old ladder on the dock, and I say, Steve, can you get back in the water for a second? So it's 30 feet at this dock, so we're like treading water, and he, lets him, you know, he lowers himself back in the water, and I say, what's going on? I'm trying to connect with you, and you're blowing me off. And he looks at me and he goes, I don't really want to do this with you right now. And of course, I immediately go into, Whoa, like, this is where I'm going to be when I realize we're getting a divorce. Like, I'm like, what? <laughs> and he said, I don't want to have this conversation with you right now. And I was like, oh, tough. I'm editing. I'm editing a lot. Um, <laughs> I'm editing tons. You have no idea how much I'm editing. Um, so I said, tough. Um, I said, that's too bad. I, I'm, tr you know, I'm, I'm struggling here. I'm trying to connect with you. You're blowing me off. What is going on? And he turns in the water, and then he turns back, and he said, are you being vulnerable? And I was like, I am, but I'm right on the edge of rage. Um, so what you say next matters. And he's just wobbling there. And so I, I don't know what to do next. And then I remember this sentence that came up for me over and over and over, especially the last six years of my research. It is a sentence that I heard from, especially around researching Rising Strong. Um, I focused a lot on leaders, veterans, active duty military, creatives, um, did a lot of interviewing in that area. And this sentence kept coming up over and over, and I was desperately reaching for something to say to Steve right now. And so here's what I want you to do. This is, you know, this is a, a request I have of you. I'm going to ask that everyone take a deep breath and not laugh at what I say next, because it could sound funny, but it's not. It wasn't for me at the time, because what is the emotion that we feel when we make a bid for connection? and that bid is pushed away. What is the affect or emotion that comes up for us when that happens? Any ideas? So anger, anger is what we call a secondary emotion, meaning it always covers something. Not good enough. Shame, shame's what, right? When we reach out to connect with someone and they push us away, 
So I'm in deep shame when I say this. So I look at Steve, and here's the sentence that has changed my life, my marriage, my parenting, and my leading. And let me tell you, leading is one of the toughest things I do. Um, I looked at Steve and said, I'm trying to connect with you, and you're blowing me off. The story I'm making up right now is one of two things happened. You either looked over at me while we were swimming, and you thought, she's old. Like, she's old. She doesn't even swim freestyle anymore. Like, she's, what happened? Or you looked over at me, and you thought, she does not rock a Speedo like she did 25 years ago. That's what I'm making up right now. And Steve's like, I just, do we have to have this conversation? I said, yeah, no, we're, we're like, look, I'm talking, you're listening, you're talking, I'm listening, we're having this conversation, what is going on? And there was this horrible silence from just, it would seem like forever. And he looked back at me and he said, I don't mind taking care of the kids. And I was like, what are you talking about? And he's like, I don't mind taking care of the kids. I know you don't get to hang out with your sisters. I don't mind taking all five of the kids back and forth across this cove all day long because that's where their hidden treasure is. I don't mind doing that. And I was like, okay, Steve, now I'm freaking out. What is happening? And he looked at me and he said, I don't know what you were saying to me this morning because I was trying to stave off the worst panic attack of my life when I was swimming. So I don't know what you were saying, I was just counting strokes. And I was like, what's happening? And he said, look, I had a dream last night that I had all five of the kids, and we were in the middle of the lake, and a ski boat was coming, and we were doing this, and the ski boat didn't slow down, and it didn't slow down, and I knew it would kill us if it hit us. So I grabbed all five of the kids and went as deep as I could go for as long as I could, waiting for that boat to go on top of us, just waiting and waiting. And I knew I couldn't go up. I knew we would be killed. And at some point, I looked over at Charlie, who was our son, who was seven at the time. And I knew that if Charlie stayed underwater for five more seconds, he would drown. So I don't know what you were saying to me. I don't know what we were talking about. I was just counting strokes, trying to get through the swim without having a full-on panic attack. Have you been there? Maybe not at the exact moment, but somewhere in your relationships, you've had a moment like that, and you were telling yourself a story that maybe wasn't based in truth. For Brene Brown, it was, it was a story that wasn't true. And, and uh, the video goes on to talk about how her husband shared with her that he was having the panic attack, and he was telling himself a story too. He was telling himself the story uh, like most men do, that he didn't have what it takes. See, me men struggle with that question often, as do women who would say, man, the same thing she said, I'm, I'm older now, and, and maybe he doesn't look at me in the same way. They were telling themselves stories that were inaccurate because they were focused inwardly. Like James teaches us what causes quarrels and fights among you, isn't it? The desires, the motives, the things that are going on inside of you, the stories that you are telling yourself. And so I would pose to you this. What is the story that you're telling yourself? What is the story you're telling yourself in terms of your relationships? Is it a story that is centered on everything inside of you, or is it a story that takes time to listen, takes time to understand, takes time to seek understanding with the relationships around you? And what I wanna pose to you is this. I think there's a key to helping us in our relationships. I think there's a key for this entire series that, that I want to set for you so that you can come back and engage with this in a really healthy way. So the key to helping our relationships is this. Tell a more humble story. Tell a more humble story. And here's why I want you to tell a more humble story. That is the story that we are part of. We are part of a humble story. Not an arrogant story. Not a self-centered story. We are part of a humble story. And that story centers around our 
Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, who humbled himself and took on human form and yet went beyond that and humbled himself to death, even death on a cross, that he would sacrifice himself, that he would humble himself so that the name of Jesus, his his name would be exalted. His name would be raised. See, we are part of a humble story, a humble Messiah, a humble Savior who comes to us every Christmas as we wait upon him in Advent and as we see him come into this world, as we retell that story of that humble family in that humble stable, on that humble little town called Bethlehem. And that humility follows him throughout his ministry all the way to his death and resurrection for you and for me, even in his last moments, him saying, not my will, but yours be done. Tell a more humble story. Here's how James ends this section of scripture. So after talking about the fights and quarrels and desires and motives, he says this, submit yourself then to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come near to God and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. And then pay attention to this one. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up. Tell a more humble story, because we have a humble Savior. See, I think you, you, in order for you to get this right, in order for me to get this right, in order for us to get this right, what we have to do is approach these relationships properly. And the paramount relationship that we have to approach properly is our relationship with Jesus. That relationship that was fractured in our sin, fractured in our brokenness. And we see the ripple effects of that in every other relationship. And so we need to start where we need to start. We need to start with Jesus and our relationship with him, that we would humble ourselves to him, that we would put ourselves under him. Here's the question I wanna ask you. Will you be open to hearing the voice of Jesus in the next four weeks? We just came out of the series called Whisper. I think it was a great series, but I wanna ask you a real question. Are you actually open to Jesus shaping your life and changing you, and asking things of you, and challenging you? Are you actually open to that, or do you think you're a better God? Because Jesus is asking, he's pleading you to humble yourselves, that he might lift you up. This is the key to our relationship with him and to every other relationship. Would we humble ourselves before a humble Savior? I want to pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that you you humbled yourself, that you sent your Son, your one and only Son, whom you loved to, to die in our place. Jesus, thank you that you you didn't consider your equality with God something to be held on to, but instead, instead you humbled yourself and, and you held on to the will of the Father and by doing that, you held on to us. Thank you, Jesus, that you offer, offer us love and mercy and grace Thank you, Jesus, that we can respond by offering to others love and mercy and grace. I pray, Jesus, over all the relationships that are represented in this room and online, I pray that in our time together in the next few weeks, you would allow us an open posture to hear from you and that you would heal and restore our relationships. I pray 
I pray for marriages that are on the rocks right now. I pray that, that you would heal them. I pray for those who are struggling with their relationships with parents, kids, that you would heal those relationships in this time. I pray, God, for those um, who are caring for their parents who are in their last chapter of life, I pray for grace and mercy and peace. I pray for friendships that are fractured and, and need to be mended. God, that you would mend those. Jesus, we love you, and it is greater that you loved us. So we respond to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Please stand and worship with us.
thanks so much for engaging with us this morning, Journey. What a great way to kick off this new series, It's Complicated. I hope that that helped you think a little bit more uh, about what's going on inside yourself and how complicated you might be um, and those around you, how we can be humble and have some grace for them as well. If you want to go a little deeper into what we talked about today, there are some reflection questions in the video description. Go ahead and use those uh, with those in the room right now or maybe for your personal devotional time throughout the week. As always, we want to thank you for your generosity. On your screen are three ways for you to give. Uh, it allows us to do all the things that we do around here on a regular basis to help lead people to become all-in followers of Jesus. Hey, there's lots of ways to stay connected. There's a QR code on your screen right now, help you take a next step, uh, whatever that might be for you. And as always, wanna encourage you to keep connected on all of our social media, on Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube. Uh, those are great places for you to connect. And if you haven't gotten that weekly email, uh, let us know that you haven't got the weekly email and that you'd like to sign up for that weekly email list. Hey, as you go, let me give you this blessing. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and the Lord give you his peace. Great to be with you, Journey. See ya.